Chris, I was just telling your fans. <laughs> <laughs> your fans. How we never ever use the plumbing kit that comes with this. Sooner than later, they're gonna have some new fittings that go in here, but for now. Tune into Pandemonium and you'll find uh -huh. out. Uh-huh. But for now, what we do, oh, well, you just tell them. Tell your fans. So we've uh, we've used a mix of inch and a half and then two inch rigid pipe coming up out of this. With this application on this urn, we're gonna do two inch pipe because we have a four to seven pump that is being split between this urn as well as the fog filter. Show your fans what's going on with your eye. I got sweat in it. Poor fiberglass. I can't Poor really fiber. Tell. So, anyways, we got two inch rigid pipe coming up through here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it really burns. It's a show piece of a water feature that I've ever seen, right? Yeah. We've done ponds four times the size. We've done waterfalls that come down 20 foot slopes and everything else. We've done mile long streams, etc., etc. This pond is incredible. And I think it's one of the first ponds or very few ponds that literally take up the entire backyard. Yeah. We got our upper pool excavated over here. So the way we like to do it is kind of roughly dig out the shape we want this upper pool. Then we'll come in, dig out our hole for our aqua blocks. Jack's not very good at drawing oh, straight lines. <laughs> you, know, like, yeah. you should see him sign his name. He uses like jumbo crayons too. One of them too. <laughs> I'll draw you a picture, all right? So anyways, we dig all this out. We roughly get our shape that we want our upper pool to look like. Then we put our aqua blocks in. Now Daniel's gonna come in, dig about a three foot hole, and then we'll dig out our trough for our centipede, our snorkel, all that fun stuff. And then we'll come in, do our liner, you know, blah, 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 blah. Here's what I'll do. Instead of talking about it, we'll show you how to do it, okay? <laughs> Here we go, you can see the whole area has been dug out for the aqua blocks. This is the space for the centipede. The snorkel's gonna sit in right here. Then we'll get the set the liner in over the top of the liner. Then goes the centipede and the snorkel, the aqua blocks, etc. etc. Right? Yeah. <laughs> every every day I try to get them. That's those sand hill grains. And every morning they come to <laughs> All right, so we got the centipede and the snorkel in, obviously the fabric of the liner and all that stuff's in there as well. Now you see this big channel off on either side where Corey's placing these rocks and stuff and then the same on Jack's side. We need to fill that whole thing. We can't fill that with gravel because the water wouldn't want to come through that gravel. We want to create a bunch of interstitial spaces so that water as it comes up then seeps out this way and this way through the aqua blocks. So every time that they put a rock in, they're not looking to actually make them fit tight. They're creating bridge type area so that water passes through it pretty evenly. Now the whole purpose for the centipede and the snorkel is not just to allow water to come in and then rise up through the aqua blocks and through different layers of aggregate as it moves up to the surface. It's more there so we can clean it out because what will happen is solids and stuff will settle out in the bottom of the centipede. In here there's a trough on the bottom so the solids will settle out in the bottom of the centipede. The centipede is then pitched to the snorkel which is recessed down even deeper than the bottom of the centipede and once a year then I can take the lid off of here, drop a sump pump down in there and pump out the sludge and silt and stuff that would build up in the centipede. If we didn't have the centipede and the snorkel, then all of that silt and fish waste and everything else that would settle out in there wouldn't settle out and would move up into our rock and gravel, eventually clogging the rock and gravel. Once they get that level with the top of the centipede, then we'll come in with our aqua blocks over the top.
right, so I got a special surprise for our customers. I actually had to thin out some fish in my pond. And so last night, me and the kids got in the pond. We were able to catch three. I actually have a bunch of really black fish. The kids have all named them Shadow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I wanted to try to get those, but at night, catching those black fish are really, really, really hard. I forget what they're called. They say every pond needs a black fish because it's good luck, but I wasn't able to get them. But I got three other ones. Now, the way I transport them is in these coolers. And you can see these air hoses go into each cooler. So I have aerators going to the coolers in the same pond water that it was out of my pond. They've been in there since last night. Let's check on them. Still doing just fine, swimming around really good. And then that's all powered off of a electrical outlet right there. So I got this going into my AC thing, extension cord running up through the window, and then to the aerators back there. So now I'm gonna transport them. Easiest way to do it is with a sock net. And now a sock net's kind of cool because this will actually hold water. So I'm gonna corral the fish into here, twist this off, twist this off, and then I can actually carry them in water. And bigger fish, insides and everything need support. That's why when you see the professionals hold them like this, really trying to carry their underbelly. Well, I'm not that experienced, but I can use a net. So I'll grab them with the net, keep them in some water, move them all the way over to the pond how they change colors. So there's one in here, kind of gold looking now. It's named I'm Jumpy because of that. <laughs> Got him. You see that? <laughs> That's YouTube gold. Ah! I think we should call him pain in the ass is what we should call him. You're welcome, Mike. <laughs> so I got two fish in here. The other one's a black and white Jiro Utsuri. So I twist this, I twist this. Now we can carry it. Normally you wouldn't put this water into the pond because you could take any contaminations that may or may not be in my pond and then bring them to his. But his pond being brand new, doesn't matter. I did dechlorinate the water and the temperatures I've already checked and they're the same. So let's see if I can give you guys a better look at these guys. That one was brown yesterday. Look how yellow we got. And then here's that Utsuri. Cool. And we got one more Sanki. Let's go get that one. He's bigger than those guys. This guy's considerably bigger. It's a Sanki. And every time you move these fish, the color changes a little bit on them. I think just due to some stress. But we'll get him into this net. Come on, buddy. There we go. Some of that water is that strong. Did you see the other two? No, I missed those two. Oh, I can see him down there. Yeah, black and white, and then kind of a yellow. He was brown in my pond, he turned yellow. He's kind of a brown with yellow scales. All right, you can see the aqua blocks in place. They backfill the joints. You can kind of see where Corey's foot went back down in there. They're gonna backfill those areas with some gravel because I really want to force that water to take the path of least resistance. And if we didn't backfill those areas with gravel, the water would come up around the channels here and we want everything to come up through the aqua block. As it comes up through the aqua blocks, then it'll hit that another layer of aggregate, which is like a two to three inch size piece of gravel. And then as we get higher and higher, the aggregate will get smaller and smaller and smaller. This is actually a good time though, before we get too much stone and gravel over it to actually rinse some of this stuff down. So we'll go ahead, hook up a clean out hose over here, rinse this gravel down. All of that stuff will get moved towards the centipede and then we can pop that lid off and pump out that dirty water. It's so much easier to wash it in layers rather than wash it from the top, trying to go all the way down through everything. Right. So you can see we've got our final layer of gravel in here. Jack went to go get just a little bit more red flint. And then Chris is working on what I'm going to say is probably the most difficult seam. Somebody had to put a rock right here. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge. Do you want to pull that out? I mean, it's, then, I gotta, then I would come straight across with it, but 
I think we're gonna be okay. So here's what we've got. We've got uh let me pull this back. Um no you're good. We've got our four inch cover tape down and then we've got plenty of liner from our wetland to come back over it. We're gonna have to cut this to show this curved seam we're doing, which is gonna be difficult. And the reason we're seaming rather than just an overlap is because the top of this fall here is only about three inches higher than our water level. So there's no way we could do a comfortable overlap and not worry about it leaking at the overlap here. So seaming it is definitely the best option. So we'll go ahead and pull this all out. I think we'll move that GoPro over here so you can kind of see a time lapse of however we're gonna do it. I would love to say we have a technique for doing this, but the plan was like, let's just figure it out as we go. Shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> okay. Do not do this at home. The better way to do it would have been do this, seam this, but then I couldn't have set that rock as we wouldn't have reached. I don't know the better way to do it. This was a bad day for you to come back, Chris. That's all I'm saying. You no, should have no, taken no, no, the no. day off. No, no. Every day with you, Brian, is a great day. <laughs> you heard it. You guys remember that, okay? Every, every day, every day with me is a great day. MG. <laughs> That's oh my goodness, we are so close. Final push, I don't know, it feels like 2.30ish. We've got basically everything we need. I'm guessing we won't be out of here until like 5.30, 6 o'clock because there's just cleanup and stuff like that that needs to happen. But I'll just kind of show you some of the last things that are happening. We got Chris over here, final touches on the urn. I think this was a good decision. Urn over 15 inch high waterfall over there. Getting that height just kind of helps balance everything out. Homeowners over there, Mike putting in in mulch every place. He's super involved in the whole project, which is awesome. Chris is trimming down that pipe. In fact, let's just go over here and I'll show you exactly what he's doing with that because it's an easy little trick. Chris, I was just telling your fans. <laughs> <laughs> your fans. How we never ever use the plumbing kit that comes with this. Sooner than later, they're gonna have some new fittings that go in here, but for now. Tune into Pandemonium and you'll find uh -huh. out. Uh-huh. But for now, what we do, oh, well, you just tell them. Tell your fans. So we've uh, we've used a mix of inch and a half and then two inch rigid pipe coming up out of this. With this application on this urn, we're gonna do two inch pipe because we have a four to seven pump that is being split between this urn as well as the fog filter. Show your fans what's going on with your eye. I got sweat in it. Poor fiberglass. I can't Poor really fiber. tell. So anyways, we got two inch rigid pipe coming up through here. <laughs> And uh, really burns. I got it from here. Look at the manifold. I got it from okay. here. <laughs> I'll show you what's going on. I've got a fan, right? <laughs> so instead of using the plumbing that come up through here, we have a two inch line going up. That's gonna give us the volume we're looking for over the big urn. It also just makes it simpler too. We used to actually put a bulkhead fitting in there and then try to line it all up. Now we just bring the two inch pipe up through. We took a hole saw, cut that out, and we'll just put silicone around that fitting there. The silicone doesn't make it watertight, but if it leaks or drip, drip, drips inside, who cares because it's all inside of our liner. The other thing we did is took a three inch hole saw for our three watt light. We put the light in there. When the light hits the bubbling fountain, the light kind of moves through that geyser that sits up on top and it'll put wavy marks all over the canopies of the trees and stuff at night and the future trees that are going in back over in here. Because I can't push all my water through that because I still need some down here in the bog, you can see this manifold set up over here. So we have our pump feeding through a three inch line all the way over from our 3000 gallon tank over there. It comes over here, splits off. One line goes down into the bottom. The other line comes this way and over to the urn. The reason I have the ball valves on there is it's hard for me to know where the water is going to want to go. I would think all the water would want to just go straight into the urn rather than make this turn. But because there's five feet of head pressure on there, more of it might go this way. So because I don't know, I put ball valves on both so we can fine tune exactly what we want. Try in the back seat. You can see the rest of the guys finishing up the edges over here. Daniel just finished up the back edges along these spears. Really important, he brought the gravel out considerably further than the edge of the pond. And this was because the splash off of this small spear is definitely going to come all the way out to here. And so that liner comes to here, we can catch all that splash and then it can migrate back down in towards the pond over in here. He's just kind of finishing off this edge here. He's got some big cobbles, he'll probably ramp up and through there. And then we just got to add some soil and a few more rocks in here 
couple more rocks back up and through there and then topsoil 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 through all this it looks to me like we're gonna be like a yard and a half short of topsoil but we can fix that we've got some trees going in we gotta get these things planted we'll get these planted and then we got a big tree going in over there but it's looking incredible rock well second to the last rock but we're gonna set this guy right here just to help tie everything together i'm guessing the machine won't pick it up go for it that is a big mama jama big mama jama I can do anything you want, Chris. Then it'll definitely look All right. What he's referring to is the strap getting a little bit shorter. If you get the strap shorter, then the machine actually has a little bit more strength. Doesn't make sense, but it is. The only reason we'll possibly be able to set this thing is because we're up on an incline. As we're coming up on an incline, a lot of the weight, there's weight displaced back this way. If we were trying to move that thing down over here, there's no possible way. No way. I think the only reason this is successful is because of the way I've strapped the rock. <laughs> He's right. Yep. And what time is it? 7.18. We love our jobs. Mm. <laughs> Not as much as we love you guys out there. Nope. <laughs> Chris, when I got here, what was it, Monday? I think so. Right? Two days ago. Two days ago, I had said I had let you run with a job that was near and dear to my heart, something that I designed over a year ago and had a pretty strong vision on how it looked. And you freaking nailed it, buddy. Nailed it. I, my favorite section is the one behind me. These stone steps, the urn. And then this waterfall is insane. This is pretty cool. I just love that huge, that big wide sheet. The little secret falls over on the side, the big rock down in the front there. The whole thing just looks so incredible. Um, how hard was it for you to leave after spending eight days out here? Well, why do you think I came back today? <laughs> you're, supposed, <laughs> you're actually supposed to be on vacation. He loves his job. <laughs> Are you glad you came back? I am so glad I came back. Of course. Is your wife glad? She could appreciate what you've put together? I don't put, know if she loves together? my job as much as, <laughs> but she loves me more, so. That's what matters. But I had to come back because I wanted to see it totally finished, see the look on the customer's face. I mean, they've been out all day, you know, just. And let's talk about the customers for a second. Let's talk about them. Right? We could, Mike, and, Mike and Chris and just. We, we could do a whole video on how awesome a customer they are so that any of our future customers can watch <laughs> that video and know how to be incredible. For Mike, I mean, he was he was a CAC way back in the day. Right? Yep. Had, a, had like a mow and blow company and did a few cons. He knew what we were capable of, so that was cool. But but he had no idea what we were gonna create, but he did have the smart sense to say, you guys have carte blanche and really just do your thing. And I will, he gave us the reins. And yeah. I mean, that's that's incredible. And they've been super gracious with us. And I, that really means a lot to us. It makes us work a little bit harder too. You know, when we're getting fed every day, two yeah. square meals a day. And coffee, lunch, coffee, mm -hmm. lunch. So awesome. Donuts. Yep, they're, they're incredible people. You know, they've got a little girl. Mike's got an older son. So it's just cool to know that they're gonna be definitely enjoying this space and their daughter's gonna grow up with it and how awesome is that well they so deserve a pond like this you yes. know it's such an incredible water feature i love the stone stairs coming in there what a great way to like when you've got these slopes that go this drastically mm -hmm. away from the house instead of trying to build the pond all the way up to the level of the patio up there yeah bring stone stairs down to the water level now it still feels like you're right on the water mm -hmm. well and i think i think what's neat is when you designed this project a year ago 
you and Mike talked, and, and again, going back to Mike's know-how, you know, really pulled off the vision with the sunken fire pit, the step, this long retaining wall that he knew had to go in because we had to build everything yep. up. So he made it as easy and seamless for us to come in here and do our thing. The logistics of it were hard because it was just, you know, one rock at, at a time for a lot of it. We had to, we could only dig eight feet at a time and rock that section, and, but it was, he made it as easy on us as we could. It's a show piece of a water feature that I've ever seen, right? Yeah. We've done ponds four times the size. We've done waterfalls that come down 20 foot slopes and everything else. We've done mile long streams, etc., etc. This pond is incredible. And I think it's one of the first ponds or very few ponds that literally take up the entire backyard, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's nothing but pond back here. Pond and waterfall and bowls and urns and spears and fish and aquatic plants and everything else. Yeah. I think Mike and his wife, Chris, totally deserve this pond. What I'm so excited about is because they are so excited about it. You know this pond is going to be one of those that just gets better and better and better year after year. Yeah. Hey guys, I hope you love this build. It was a butt kicker, especially for this guy and the rest of our awesome team. I was lucky enough to come back and help for the last couple days and see it running and it just turned out amazing. You guys know the routine. Like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends and maybe we'll do it again. Maybe. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha